I held the stone in my hand and closed my eyes, concentrating on a specific point in time. The next thing I knew I was standing on a dusty road in ancient Judea. The air was thick with the stench of sweat and blood, and the sound of weeping and moaning filled the air. In the distance I could see a growing crowd, and felt a sense of excitement rising within myself. I heard the cries of the people gathered around the hill, and felt a strange energy in the air. Feeling the wind pick up, I could sense an odd coming storm. As I made my way through the throngs of people, I felt a chill run through my spine, as if I were being watched. Arriving at the foot of the cross, I found myself staring directly into the face of the legendary man himself. I couldn't believe my eyes. I had always thought of this man as a myth, a legend, but here he was, hanging on the cross, bloodied and beaten. I watched in horror as two thieves were nailed to the crosses on either side of him. I couldn't help but feel a sense of deep sadness and despair. Slowly, the crucified man turned his head to fix his eyes upon mine own. I froze, heart pounding in my chest. I had expected to be a mere observer, a ghostly presence watching from the shadows. And now, frozen in fear, unable to move or speak, I was face to face with the man I had come to see, and the crushing weight of the situation left me unable to breathe. Suddenly, everything stopped. Everyone and everything was frozen in place. The sun's light seemed to dead. The wind had completely stopped. It was pure silence. You do not belong here, the man said. His voice resounded with the power of thunder, and there were flames coming from within his eyes. As the sun seemed to grow darker, the man began to radiate an aura of shimmering golden light. Suddenly, there were hundreds of cracks from the sky, unlike any sound I had ever heard, and I was surrounded by orbs of illumination, creating colors of light I had never known. I had never believed in the divine, but in that moment, I felt a sense of awe and fear that I did not know was possible. I'm sorry. I, I did not know, I stammered. I just wanted to see. I wanted to know. The man regarded me for the longest moment, his eyes seeing through into my soul. Then you will see, and you will know, he replied. I felt a sudden rush of energy surge through my body. The sounds of the crowd instantly resumed, and I could again smell the stench and feel the hot humid air. The orbs were gone. No one else was aware of what had just happened. The crucified man was now speaking to the thief on his left. As the sun continued to set, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I ran from the crowd and watched for a distance, trying to get back to where I had entered this reality. Watching as I retreated from the scene, the crucified man took his final breath, and the sky turned dark. The ground began to shake violently. I watched in horror as the demons and undead creatures began to emerge from the depths of hell, gnashing their teeth and falling upon the ground. The unworldly creatures ripped through the spectators, tearing them limb from limb with hellish fury. I tried to run, but my legs would not obey me. I stumbled and staggered as my mind swam, fighting tunnel vision and trying to breathe. I saw people's bodies dropping silently into the dust as their souls screamed being dragged out to hell, their cries echoing in my ears. I could feel the screams of the dying and the laughter of the demons searing into the memories of my very soul. I was trapped in a living nightmare, unable to escape the horrors that surrounded me. I had to get back to my own reality. I saw countless souls being stripped from their flesh and consumed by the demonic horde. Continuing to flee, I soon found myself standing on the dusty road where I had arrived. I looked down at the philosopher's stone in my hand. With a deep breath, I closed my eyes and focused all my energy on returning to my own reality. I felt a spark of power as I activated the stone's magic, and then, nothing. I opened my eyes and realized I was still in ancient Judea. I tried again to activate the stone, but nothing worked. I was trapped, stranded in a time of horrors and demons. Hours turned into days, and I was trapped in a living nightmare. I watched as the demons began to take over the world, turning it into a place of darkness and despair. I saw countless atrocities and horrors, and I began to lose hope that I would ever make it back home. On the third day, something changed. I woke up to find that the sky was blue again and the demons were gone. I felt a sense of relief, but I was still stranded in the past. All at once, I re remembered the legend. I ran to the holy place I knew would save me. I ran to the place where several soldiers had placed the body and covered it with the boulder, needing all of their effort to do so. I watched it all as I saw the stone moving on its own and the man emerged from the tomb, glowing with a great light. I felt a sense of hope and relief flood over me knowing that this was my chance to return to my own life. As I approached the man, I felt a sense of awe and reverence. I knew that I had witnessed something divine and I felt an infinite sense of gratitude and respect for the man before me. Please, I said, my voice shaking with emotion. I need your help. I need to return to my own time. The man looked at me with knowing eyes and nodded. Did you see? He asked, his gaze never leaving my face. Yes, I answered. Do you know? He asked. Yes, I answered. You have been given a gift, he said, and you must use it wisely. And then, with a suddenness that left me reeling, I felt a sense of vertigo as the world around me began to spin. When I opened my eyes again, I was back in my own house. Philosopher's stone still clutched tightly in my hand.